In many situations in life, we need to make predictions or judgments about things that are going to happen in the future or things that we can never observe. Think about investing in the stock market, for example. Let's imagine you have two mutual funds to choose from. You need to decide which one to choose from on the basis of your prediction of the prices that those funds are going to yield in the next few years. Or let's say you're hiring a new employee. You need to make a judgment about the quality of the performance that this person is going to give you over the next three years on the basis of evidence that you can see in front of you now. But unless that performance actually happens, all you are left with is simply your judgment. Or think about whether or not to give a loan to somebody that applies to your bank. Again, you want to assess their loan worthiness, but there is really no way that you know exactly what that variable is going to be. In all these cases, there is some truth, but all you can observe are pieces of evidence that you believe will predict that truth. Let's look at this model, for example. This is what is called the lens model, and it comes to us from a part of psychology known as social judgment theory. The social judgment theory says something very simple. It essentially says that when we try and make judgments about the truth, and again, the truth is something that we don't observe or that will take time to happen, we rely on what are called cues, which are pieces of information in the environment that we believe will predict the truth. Based on those cues, we somehow combine them to form a judgment. That combination could be based on intuition, as we talked about, where we somehow have some pattern in our head which says, if I see Q1, Q2, and Q3, here's what's going to happen. Or you could have a systematic model to combine information from those cues. So once you have a set of cues, all you then need to do is to look at these cues and form a judgment about the truth. Let's think about an example of a situation where you have a recruiter who's going to try and make judgments about the performance of a given employee over the next three years. If you, in fact, had true data on the performance and you measured the correlation between the judgment that the recruiter made today and the actual performance, that correlation is a measure of what we call the performance of the judge. The higher the correlation, the better the judge can actually predict what's going to happen in the future. So let's look at this judge. Let's see what sort of cues might be relevant in a situation like this one. If you're the recruiter, let's imagine that you've done a lot of research to show that there are three cues that you believe predict the performance of the employee. The IQ score of the applicant is important. The second thing that's important is the kind of experience that they've had in the past, work experience, both in terms of quality and quantity. And finally, their performance as a student, their educational qualifications. Let's also imagine that you had a scale on which you could measure each of these three items. For a moment, let's focus on a situation where we don't yet know the truth. But all you know is that as a recruiter, you look at 100, 150, 200 such applications during the course of recruiting season. For every application, you have data on these three cues, and you form some judgment. Suppose we focused on the right-hand side of this model for a minute. Let's imagine that you could run a regression where you looked at your judgment, the recruiter's judgment, as a function of the three cues across these 200 data samples. It's like an experiment. It's an experiment where you're essentially replicating yourself multiple situations where the cues are different and you're forming a judgment. What does that regression equation tell you? This is what the equation might look like. It might actually say that judgment is some a, a constant, plus some b1 multiplied by the IQ score, plus b2 multiplied by experience, plus b3 multiplied by education. What is this? This is a model of your judgment. If, in fact, tomorrow you are not at work, I could use this model to predict what you would have judged about this particular applicant. Now, what is the value of doing something like this? What does it do for me? There was a number of studies done in the 70s and 80s that looked at the idea of using a model of the judge to see if, in fact, it did better than or worse than the judge themselves. And here's what the research found. If you did a correlation between the model's prediction of what you would have predicted and the truth, assuming, you, of course, now you had the truth, 
it turns out that that correlation is better than, in many cases, the correlation between the judge's prediction and the truth. That simply means that the model is a better predictor of the final outcome than the judge is. Now that's an interesting finding. And it essentially is intuitive because of the fact that models are great at consistently applying the same rule again and again and again. The judge is fantastic because the judge tells us what cues are relevant, the rec recruiter knows what data to look at, but they sometimes get tired and fatigued and they might not consistently apply that same rule again and again. The model does that for them. So it minimizes errors. Now, if that's the case, what implication does that have for us? Here's some data from a paper by Robin Dawes back in 1979, where he looked at studies that were done by a number of people where experts were asked to make some predictions, some judgments. They ran a model of that expert, and then finally they compared the R squared, the correlation of the model's prediction with the truth, as well as the manager's or the expert's prediction with the truth. And here's what they found. In one study, where experts were asked to predict the GPA, the grade point average, of a number of students in Illinois, the correlation between the experts' prediction and the truth was 0.33. The correlation between the model of the expert and the truth was 0.5. In other words, the model of the expert did a better job than the expert in predicting the truth. Likewise, a number of doctors were asked to make predictions about a patient who had a given set of symptoms. Was this patient neurotic? or psychotic. And it turns out that the expert's uh, correlation was 0.28, the model of the expert 0.31. Likewise, faculty ratings at a university in Oregon, uh, the expert's correlation was 0.19, the model's correlation was 0.25. This process of taking a regression model to capture your own intuition is called judgment bootstrapping. Essentially what it is, is that you're using your intuition but you're letting an equation capture it, and by using that equation, you can be more accurate and more predictive about your own prediction. And that's the basis of judgment bootstrapping. So in essence, intuition can be modeled, intuition can be decomposed by simply looking at situations where you have a decision or a judgment that you make repetitive times, keep track of the judgment, keep track of the cues, and the resulting regression equation will give you a model that explains how you make decisions and judgments.